Give God the praise. Hallelujah. Give God the glory of today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I came with expectation on today. How many of you came here with expectation on today? Come on, come on, give God some glory in this place. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Do you love him on today? Do you love him on today? Hallelujah. Do you love God on today? Lord, I love you. Come on. Just take a moment right here. Just lift up your own praise to God. Lift up your own praise to God. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Thank you, We love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. Oh, magnify the Lord me. Let's exalt his name together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, we need a touch from you. Jesus, we need a touch from you. Lord, we need a touch from you, yeah. Oh, we need a touch from you, yeah. Oh, just one touch, just one touch from the Father on today. Yes. Come on on today. I know I'm not the only one in the house that need a touch from God today. Yeah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit. Oh, we welcome you in this room. Oh, we dedicate this service to you. We dedicate our praise to you. We dedicate this worship to you. Oh, Lord, be exalted in this room. Oh, we exalt you in this room. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw on me. Up in this place, Hallelujah. he'll draw on me. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel it in my spirit. Oh, God, draw on me unto you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're mighty, you're mighty. Come on, say that. You're mighty, you're mighty. You're mighty, you're mighty. You're mighty, you're mighty. You're mighty, you're mighty. He's mighty, he's mighty. You're mighty, you're 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 mighty. See, you're mighty, you're mighty. 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 Say, you're holy, you're holy, you're holy. 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 I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you. 
adore you, we adore you. We adore you, we adore you. We adore you, we adore you. We adore, we adore. Take your time to say, Lord, we adore you. We adore, we adore you. We adore you, Lord. We adore, we adore you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the highest praise. Hallelujah. It's the highest praise.
worship with one accord. any visitors today? First time visitors. Okay. Uh, where is Alison? Outside. Amen. Here. We well, first time any, visitors. Any first time visitors? Raise your hand. I mean, my DJ at your uh, graduation party. It's not time for offering yet. Brother Leganzi. I'm Donnell. My name is Donnell, and this is my first time being here. Amen. Welcome. Glad to have you. Good, good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Kumba, and this is my first time visiting. Alusan is my brother. Amen. Glad to have you all here. Thank you for coming. Anybody else? Raise your, raise your hand. 
she don't want to speak. Well, we're glad to have you here. Amen. Amen. This is New Life Empowerment, where we empower individuals through the Word of God, one verse at a time. We're not in a hurry because our God is not in a hurry. Amen. Satan is the only one in a hurry because he knows he has a name. God has all the time in the world. He created us, put us in time. His image is in us. Yet we are inside time that he's outside the time. So he can rewind the clock anytime he wants to. Amen. We're glad you're here. We pray this is an important uh, Sunday for us. First weekend in June. It was in June that I answered my call to the Lord. It was in the same June that I was ordained. It's in the same June that I got my first doctorate. I just seen that this morning. So June is an important month for us in this ministry. One of my grandchildren was born in June. And I call her grandpa's baby. Amen. I need you to pay particular attention this morning for what the Lord has asked me to speak to you about. The month is going to be the wonders contained in praise. And today's sermon is going to be conquering depression. Every one of us deal with about with this thing called depression. There are clinical depression, there's regular depression. God has an answer for both. He has asked me to share with you this morning. Amen. Reverend Johnson, would you come and raise our tithes and offering? I should move on in the service. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hallelujah. Started the ministry of cooking, they asked me if 
but I would teach them the quilt. And I explained to them, I'm not an expert, but I know how to quilt. She said, well, we need you to teach us. One did it way back when she was younger, but it's like most women when you start having children and say life happens. Good quilting is, is detailed and it takes time. So they asked me if I would come in and teach them, and I told them that I'm leaving this weekend, but I'd be back third Saturday with samples of both of them told me their favorite colors, and I'm gonna have samples for them. And we're gonna start with making lap blankets for those ladies. They're not as large, they just, they're a little tedious if you do it right, but they wanna learn. So I gotta not only just show them how, I gotta study myself to make sure I remember what I think I remember. And make sure I can give them something to go by when I'm not there. But I just thank God for the opportunity he's given me with these women. And if there's anybody that wants to participate, you want to welcome. But these ladies, basically, they want somebody to come and spend time with them. Because their children are grown, they're out of state. So if you feel like that you like old people, you want to give one of your Saturdays for an hour or so, we'd be glad to have you. But if not, that's all right, too. But I pray that we all find our niche in the church where we can work for the glory of God. And if there's not anything else, would you please stand for our congregational hymn? Yeah, dismiss the kids. Kids, you go to your little room, quietly, quietly as you can. Oh, somebody fell asleep. Let us pray. A precious Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, a few of your handmade servants have gathered this morning to give you glory and to praise your holy name. We pray, Father, for an encounter this morning. We ask you to cut us so deep by your word, which is a double-edged sword, that the enemy shall have no access to us. For you told us to put on the full armor that is yours, that we might be able to withstand the evil day. Thank you, Father, for all you're doing and what you're about to do. And it's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Count it down by faith. Amen. 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 And amen. I need you to remain standing. Who in here has ever ex experienced depression deeply or slightly? <laughs> Who in here has laid down and didn't feel like get up and do anything? Raise your hand. Who in here didn't want to say a kind word to their neighbor? Raise your hand. All these are as a result of what we call depression. 
For I have received of the Lord, which I will also deliver unto you. For it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save those that believe. I need you to do me a favor. I need you to put your hand on your head and say today, Father, deliver me from the spirit of depression in the name of Jesus and by the blood of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. I want you to pay rapt attention this morning. We have had bouts in this place. Everybody that comes along says, I deal with depression. Some of them that need to be here are not here, but nonetheless, we will say what needs to be said. The anchor scripture is Psalm verse, chapter 30, verse 5. He says, for his anger endured but for a moment. In his favor is life. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. That's our anchor scripture. The whole of June, we are going to be exploring what is contained in praise, the wonders that are contained in praise. But we are going to start today with conquering depression. Uh, what is depression? Depression is a mood disorder that causes a persistent feeling of sadness or loss of interest. I'll read that again to you. Depression is a mood disorder. If it's in order, it's normal. If it's not normal, it's abnormal. <laughs> abnormal means abuse of normal. Hello. So if it's not normal, it's abnormal. Something made it to be abnormal. In the beginning, it was not so. When Adam was put in the garden, he was not depressed. God was the one that said, it's not good for you to be alone. I'll make you help me. So he had no depression in him. He might have been lonely, but he wasn't depressed because he was in the presence of God. Hmm. Now, I'm going to talk to the men for a second. Adam, being in charge of the garden, got a help me. To help him till the garden. But he was careless with the conversations his wife was having with Satan. That brought depression. Because the wife succumbed to Satan, thereby dragging the husband down. So they left the place of fulfillment. Now they are lacking. Y'all don't hear me. Because they fell from their place of grace into where they were lacking, all of a sudden they saw their own nakedness. And they tried to provide their own nakedness, but it didn't work. Because God had to shed the first blood to clothe them with the skin of an animal. We're talking about depression. So what are the definitions that I could give you outside the medical field? Now... If everything is going well in your life, the wife is not giving you a headache. There's food in the refrigerator. You're not having problems at, jo at the job. You have money in the bank. And you are depressed. That's clinical. But if my friend dies, and I'm sad because my friend is dead, and my sadness is only for a little while, it's not cl clinical. But then, 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 there's this third category where all these things are going on. Even the temporary depression lasts longer than it needs to. There's a reason for that. So God wants me to talk to you 
about the sources of depression and how to get rid of it. He said, what are the sources of depression? Number one, these are biblical sources of depression. It's called the spirit of heaviness. The Bible says in Isaiah 61 verse 3, and I'm doing it from King James Version. So some of us don't know the name. That all we know is we wake up in the morning, it's like some, something is sitting on our chest. We are sad about everything we can think of. And this thing can visibly and physically manifest itself on us. Every thought that crosses our mind scares us. It says to appoint unto them the mount in Zion. I want you to know that Zion is the church of Jesus Christ. Amen? So it says, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. So there are mourners even in church. Listen to me. Unto them beautiful ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called trees of righteousness. Spirit of heaviness, number one. Number two, the spirit of fear. Huh. I, I've told a story in Sunday school, Bible study, about being petrified about snakes. Even with his head cut off, I didn't want nothing to do with snakes. Because I was afraid of a snake. No matter how little, little, some of them were smaller than my pinky. I'll run the other way, and I don't run for anything. But if I see a snake, I will run. So I started to ask God, why am I having these issues? I mean, heart beating fast and everything. I'll make Nana or Chichi or somebody go get the lawnmower, because I don't want to be in the lawn with a snake in it. And they had no fear of the snake. Listen to what the Bible says. He says in 1 John 4, 18, there is no fear in love. Hmm. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casted out fear. Because fear had torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. So because I lack love, the agape love, I don't know how to handle the things that God has already put under me. Mm -hmm. Number three source of depression, the spirit of anxiety. The spirit of anxiety. And it usually attacks people late at night. A sleeping man is a dead man. He's a helpless man. He has no control of his body. But yet his spirit man is alive. And he's awake. So, uh -huh. the spirit of anxiety will come sit on your chest. And wake you up. And you wake up in a panic. You are laying in your bed. Nothing has happened. Nobody's called. But you are wide awake, panicking. Where did that come from? Spirit of anxiety. Look at this. In Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25. Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop. But a good word maketh it glad. Okay, I'm already pointing to the solution. <laughs> you go to bed without a word, you left the door open for the spirit of anxiety to come. So, who, because sometimes you think, okay, maybe in this generation, because this is a microwave generation, everyone in a hurry, that's why I have anxiety. That's why I have depression. That's why this happened. That's why that happened. I'm here to tell you today, there were more great men in this country and in the Bible that suffered depression. 
Did you know Winston Churchill suffered depression? President of the country. Did you know Moses suffered depression? So much so that he said, God, kill me. Let me read you some scriptures here. In Numbers eleven fifteen, 15, <laughs> Moses says, if thou deal thus with me, kill me. You don't say kill me out of happiness. You say kill me out of depression. I'm going somewhere with this. So Moses suffered depression. Elisha, Elijah was a prophet. <laughs> Elijah was depressed. But Elijah was so bold and wild. Anybody, people, everybody else was afraid of. Elijah wasn't afraid of. So he says, you guys want to worship Baal? I worship the true God that is in heaven. So I tell you what we do. Let's go on to Mount Carmel. Let's have a contest. You Baal prophets, you come on. You set up your altar, and I set mine up. You call on your God. Whatever God that answers by fire is the true God. Listen to me. And they gyrated and they vibrated. <laughs> Nothing happened. Elijah goes and sets up his altar. Cut up the meat, put it on the altar, and dug a trench around it, and say, pour some water on it. Soak the meat. Soak the wood. Soak everything on the altar. Y'all know water don't go with fire, right? He told them, uh, maybe your God is sleeping. You need to shout a little louder. They did nothing happen. You might need to clap for him. He might be taking a siesta. Nothing happened. He allowed them all day to do what they needed to do. Nothing happened at the altar. Listen to me. Listen to me. Elijah said, Thou God of heaven, that answered by fire. The altar caught on fire. All the water that was dug around the altar got licked up by the fire. And Elijah proceeded to take him off the mountain by himself, listen to me, and took him to the valley and killed 450 of them. Is that success? We're talking about depression. Little lady called Jezebel. When she heard the news, who did this? Elijah. I'm going to kill Elijah. Elijah took off running. The Bible says he went a day's journey trying to avoid a little woman. He had already slaughtered 450 prophets by himself. Now a little woman is threatening, and he takes off in a day's journey. He ends up inside the forest. Do you know how long it is to walk all day? Hello? He's sitting under the juniper tree. Look at this. First Kings 19.4. Depression. He says, But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. Who goes in the wilderness? Except you'll be depressed. And he sat on the juniper tree. I said, God, I, I must die. You need to kill me. You need to take my life. The little lady wants to kill me. Number three prophet that was depressed, Jonah. Mm. God told Jonah, go to Nineveh and preach. He said, no, I want to go to Tarsus. God brought him back to to Nineveh. He preached a sermon. And he went and stood by to see if they would do what he preached. They did. And they were saved. Jonah became depressed. Look, he says, Therefore now, O Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Depression. The same spirit of depression, these ones were wise because they knew God. Listen to me. Most of us say, I'm going to take my life. Can I give you this for free? Everyone depression chases, God has a great destination for. Amen. 
if you don't carry anything that will affect the kingdom of God, the enemy will mess with you. Mm. So, John the Baptist got arrested for preaching the gospel. And Herod was going to kill him. He was depressed in the prison. Called his disciples, go ask this Jesus. Is he the one we're expecting or is there another? God, don't help me. The only time you start asking stupid questions is because you're, you're depressed. You don't see your way out, so you're asking humans for an answer that can really come from God. Hmm. Hannah, I'm going to tell you these stories and then I'm going to give you the scriptures. Hannah had a husband who had another wife. His other wife was having kids. Hannah wasn't. Hmm. Hannah would show up at the temple calling upon the Lord because she was depressed. She had no children. The day her word came, she ate for the first time in that condition. And Samuel came. God don't hear me. <laughs> Depression was on Hannah so much because she couldn't have a baby, but she went before the Lord, and she had peace when she prayed. She made a vow, she said, Lord, if you give me a male child, I will return him to you the rest of his life. God gave her peace, and she did exactly what she told God she would do. Listen to me. She took Samuel to Eli. And Eli became Samuel's trainer. Samuel was the one that prophesied to Eli what was going to happen to him that what God said. Samuel was the one that anointed the king over Israel called Saul. The same Samuel anointed David. Hmm. Do you all see what I'm saying? So if there's no glorious destiny, depression doesn't come. Hmm. The cave that holds your blessing is the scariest cave you're ever going to see. Huh? The cave that holds God's greatest blessings in your life is the scariest cave you're ever going to see. So you don't ever want to enter it. So what is the enemy's plan? So I can get off this thing. <laughs> See, it says the spirit of heaviness is designed to bring you sadness. <laughs> Depression, grief, and sorrow. It is designed to quench the spirit of joy in you. <laughs> thereby keeping you from assessing God's throne for grace. Hmm. See, we can't go to God without joy. We can't go to God without thanksgiving. We enter his courts with praise. In his presence is fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. So depression is designed to keep me from even coming in, coming in, in, in God's gate. So I can ask him for what I need for when I need it. It is only the expression in my face that will tell you if I'm sad or depressed or if I'm happy. Yeah, don't hear me. The Bible says in Colossians 1.16, you don't need to go there. You can go there. <laughs> Try to confuse him as much as I can. It says everything that was made, I'm paraphrasing, was made by him, for him, through him, so seen and unseen. So depression is unseen. Mm. Mm. We see the results of depression. We don't see the depression coming. Number one, Satan has designed depression to paralyze us. <laughs> John 10.10 10 says, The thief cometh, not but for 
to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus says, I have come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. Listen to me. So if the thief is here to kill and to steal and to destroy, his ploy is distraction. So he comes at you with the spirit of fear. He comes at you with the spirit of depression. He comes at you with the anxious spirit. Meanwhile, the Bible tells you, be anxious for nothing. Ah. How and what do we do about this depression? Now for the keys. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. What do I do against this spirit of depression? Number one, you got to know what God says about you. <laughs> Study to show yourself approved. A workman need not be ashamed who can rightfully divide the word of truth. So if I don't know what my rights are, anything can tell me anything. And I'm likely to believe that anything that anybody has said to me. <laughs> I used to smoke cigarettes, and I quit cigarettes years ago. I gained some weight. But if you tell me I'm pregnant, I'm not worried about what you said. Because I know I'm a man, and men don't get pregnant. So I don't need to go see a doctor. Y'all don't hear me. <laughs> but if I don't know who I am and you tell me I might be pregnant, I'm worried now. I wake up in the middle of the night anxious. I'm fearful that I'm not going to know how to deliver a baby. But it's not even in my nature. They say fear. <laughs> what did they call it? F-E-A-R. Fake events appearing real. That means that the spirit will whisper in my ear, you are going to die. I have exaggerated this whisper over the word of God. Now I'm panicking. So study to show yourself approved. Number two, watch what you say. I'm almost done. Watch what comes out of your mouth. Proverbs 18.22 says, 18.21, says death and life is in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Let me say that slowly. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Those that use their tongue will reap the benefits. If you say you are going to die, yes, you will die. If you say you are going to live, yes, you will live. In Deuteronomy 29, 29, he says, let me see what the guys he can do. He says, the secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. In Deuteronomy 30, verse 29, it says this. Let me see if I'm still any good. There's no 29. 19 then. See, I do make mistakes too. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have said before you life and death, blessing and cursing. How do you bless? You speak, don't you? Curse it. How do you curse? By speaking, right? Therefore, those who are, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. The things you say, the things you say, will come back to you. Number three, these are weapons against depression. Your mind. 
Your mind is the battlefield of this life. Your mind is where your emotions lie. Your mind is what the spirit of anxiety attacks. Your mind is what the spirit of fear attacks. Your mind Amen. is where the depression shows up. Amen. Your mind. So Romans 12, 2 says this. Be not confirmed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing. Look at the word, renewing, continuous. It's not, I do it today, I'm okay. Remember this. When you have an infection, you go to the doctor. Listen to me. He'll give you a Z pack. Is that what they call it? It's full of antibiotics, right? This one, I take four days. Tomorrow, I take three. The other day, I take three again. Then two, two, one. If I don't finish the course, I'm not healed. When the doctor gives us prescription, I don't care what we're doing. We remember to take the medicine. Because we have the faith in the medicine that the doctor gave us, we get healed because of our mind. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all think medicine is that powerful. So why do people die in the hospital? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When your mind is afflicted, there is no amount of medicine that can help you. When your time is up on earth, there is no amount of doctoring. There is no amount of medicine. There's no amount of surgery that will keep you alive. You will live not one second longer. But the reason why you see hospitals in the area, all the hospitals in this area are by a religious organization. St. Bernard is Catholic, NEA is Baptist, Methodist is up in Paragu, and each one you go to, if you go to St. Bernard, if you go in there, there's a cross on the wall in every room. And the sisters come and pray with you daily. Why? Because if your spirit goes down, your body goes with it. I am going to leave you all alone. So my mind needs to be filled with an assignment. Hmm. This is not above your pay grade. I need you to listen carefully. Your mind needs an assignment from God. How do I give my mind an assignment? Read what God has said about you. In Colossians chapter 3 verse 1, it says this. If ye then be risen with Christ. All of us in here are born again, right? Hello? Are we all born again? He says, if ye then be risen with Christ. Seek those things which are where? Where? Above who? Above me. Because my creator is above me. In Ephesians 2, uh, verse 5, it says, I'm seated far above principalities up with him. So he says, those things which are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Can I help you? Your mind. In Philippians 4, 8, it's one of my, my wife's favorite scriptures. He says, finally, my brethren. He says, finally. <laughs> Whatsoever things are true. Question for you. Are you alive? I didn't say amen. Are you alive? Amen. Are you able to hear me? Amen. Is that the truth? Are you standing on solid ground? Yes. Do you have a God in heaven? Yes. Did he wake you up this morning? Yes. Did he keep you from having a car accident before you got here? Yes. Yes. He said, finally, brethren, <laughs> whatsoever things are honest, whatever soever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Think on these things. There's more. Read it for yourself. Finally, number four. Engage the instrument of praise. 
engage the instrument of praise. Remember, I told you, your scariest cave is the cave that holds your answer. Depression doesn't even want you to open your mouth. It doesn't even want you to say hello to your spouse. You are so weighted down, you can't even say good morning. But by the same mouth that he's trying to close, will you release yourself from that spirit of depression? Look what it says in Isaiah 61 again. He says, to appoint unto them that morning Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Let me help you. Do you see my robe? I could come out here without my robe. But this is first Sunday and we serve you communion. So this is my priestly robe. <laughs> to make me understand I'm not regular Greg Ota. I'm a priest from the Most High God doing his bidding at the altar. So I purposely and consciously put on my robe. Mm. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, he said, put on the whole arm of God. Yes. So if I don't put on my armor of God, I become a victim to whatever elements there are out there that wants to kill me. So it says, the garment of praise. So I have to put it on. I have to sing when I don't feel like singing. Hmm. Let me hurry up. Look. In Africa, in the early days, when the Europeans came, they saw the richness of the ground, of the land. They wanted some of it. But there was a little problem called malaria from mosquitoes. So it killed some of them. They invented a medicine called quinine. That's the bitterest thing you ever tasted in your life. You, want, you don't want to die from malaria? Take the quinine. Nobody that I know like taking quinine. But if you want to stay alive, you pinch your nose, you do whatever you have to, you get it through. Oh, Y'all don't help me. Do you want to get rid of the depression? Yeah. Engage in praise. He says, I have given you the garment of praise against the spirit of heaviness. That's the only answer the Bible has for depression. It says in Psalm 109 verse 30, I will greatly praise the Lord with my mouth. Yeah, I will praise him among the multitude. God don't hear me. When it's time to praise the Lord, don't sit down and fold your hand. That's your escape. Some of us don't want to clap. We don't want to raise our hands because we, we have a perspiration thing under our arm. The person you are concerned about has no hell or heaven to put you in. The depression you are dealing with that is not clinical, you could praise your way out of it. But you keep your hands down and whatever is holding you is holding you down. Can I tell you this for free? The enemy not likes secret. I'm going to explain it two ways. When you are being oppressed by depression, you don't tell anybody else, nobody else will pray for you. But at the point, the devil will make you sing this depression everywhere, thereby glorifying what he's doing. Y'all don't hear me. There's got to be a balance to what, okay, I've given it over to God. Devil, I'm no longer acknowledging you. I've said this before. Devil has no power or authority to tell me when to pray because I don't pray to him, I pray to God. But if I don't know the word of God, everything that goes wrong, I think is wrong, I'm praying. Let me leave you all alone. Hebrews 13, 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is 
the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Praise is the answer to depression. Next week, I'm going to tell you what else praise will lead me into. We did this in November. God brought it back. My people are not praising me enough, so I am not manifesting the way I'm supposed to manifest. The Bible says in Psalm 69, verse 30, I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. Folks, as we close, whatever God has done for you, he needs you to acknowledge him. The reason why the enemy wants to push you down because he doesn't want you to praise God with your mouth. The more he pushes you down, the less you want to go to the throne of grace to obtain mercy. The more you open your mouth, in Psalm 81 verse 10, the Bible says, Open thou your, ma ma your mouth. I'm the Lord God that brought you out of your lowest point in your life. He said, Open your mouth and I will fill it. So until you tell God, I'm all yours. Until you tell the enemy, take your hands off of me. Until you tell the enemy, you have no part of this. Until you tell the enemy, when I was created, you were not in Zion. Get your hands off of me. Rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The door of the church is open as they sing softly. The door is open. For the acceptance of members. <laughs>